Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and this Friday, just like we did last Friday, we're gonna try and do a complete knife build in one single day. Uh, the original knife that I had tried making last Friday, that barbecue knife, um, I'm not finished it yet, uh, still working on it, but we're gonna kinda just work on that and compile the footage. But much like that knife that we had tried, we're gonna be doing a stainless steel today. Uh, today I'd like to work with 154 CM, a stainless steel I've had a lot of success with in the past. So that's the basic knife we're gonna try and make right there. Uh, I'm gonna try and hollow this part out. I really wanna make an ultralight knife, and I'm gonna call this a running knife. A running knife, you say? You're not supposed to run with knives in your hand. Of course you're not supposed to run with knives in your hand. I, I have to wait for between saw cuts. I appreciate their work. In addition to the push-up routine that I've been doing lately, I'm also trying to get back into running. I used to do a lot of running. Um, I've completed five marathons in my time, and I don't like running without a knife on. Now, I've got a couple neck knives, and I've tried wearing those, but the problem is they bounce around. Also, the neck knives that I have, they're all carbon steel, pretty good carbon steels, but still, by the time you take them out a few times and you get all that sweat all over, they're just gonna get ugly really quick, so. But I figure 154 CM is probably good steel for this choice because it's not gonna deteriorate so quickly once it gets like salt and sweat on it and stuff like that. And it still has decent edge retention, it's not too expensive, and it's easy enough to heat treat. Now the idea is I'm gonna make this knife and then make a sheath that could carry on a belt, probably like some type of a neoprene running belt, and I'll carry the knife horizontally in my back, kind of at my back, sort of the small of my back, maybe a little bit lower, uh, but just that way I've got a knife just at the ready. When I do my running, I'm always running out here in these country roads, and sometimes I will go for several miles down these roads without seeing a human being, without seeing a vehicle, nobody will pass me, and it's really nice. The solitude and, and the alone that you can be out here is fantastic. But at the same time, those situations without a knife could get hairy. Uh, I always just like having a knife for an emergency, so I thought, you know what, why don't we make a really nice, super lightweight knife? It's gonna ride nice and tight to our body, it's not gonna jiggle around, and also the salt and sweat and all that crap uh, hopefully won't destroy it and make it so ugly so soon. So that's the knife we're gonna make today. I've got kind of a concept drawing done. I'm just gonna trace that onto some paper and then I'll cut this one out. That way I always have this kind of as my design template that I can refer back to if need be. Then we have our template, and again, the way I like to do it is I'll just take some Super 77 adhesive, spray it on the piece of steel that I'm using. Uh, this is it. I made another knife from this. Let's make sure it's gonna fit. Oh yeah, perfect. Plenty of room. And then, uh, because this is stainless steel, I'm going to be cutting this out with a angle grinder outside. Uh, I find the bandsaw blades, they just get eaten up way too quick when I'm doing this, so... Uh, I'm just gonna wipe off this Prussian blue, or Daikon blue. We call it Prussian blue, I don't know why. Uh, that's what they taught me in millwright school anyways. And uh, we're gonna get all that, we're gonna wipe this stuff off glue this on there, and then after I glue it, I'm also going to spray it with the blue. That way, as I'm grinding, the paper comes off, I've still got the outline in blue. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to finish this side nice and precise, and then I'm going to take my... Where are they? Oh, stand by. Take my calipers and set... What did I make this? 5 eighths of an inch thick? So I'll set that to 5 eighths, and I'm going to scratch this line after I've got this edge completely ground how I want it so I can make this exactly parallel uh, to the end. So that's the next step of the process. Okay, bit of bad news. This is my last cutoff disc. Uh, there's really not much left, so I'm gonna do what I can with it. After this, we'll switch up to just like a regular grinding disc, and then maybe finish the cutting out on the on the belt grinder. But uh, we'll use this up as much as we can. I hope we can at least get one side cut out with this. That's what I call getting your money's worth.
so we've got that cleaned up now and purely out of curiosity I want to see how much weight we remove from this thing after we do our slot in here and after we uh, grind our bevel so we are 87 grams Okay, so the next step of this process, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and machine a slot right in there. I'm gonna do a quarter inch, that'll leave about 200 thou on each side. Uh, I don't wanna go more than that because I still want it to be fairly robust and I'm worried about it getting a little crazy in heat treat. So I'm gonna set up the milling machine and we're gonna see, I'm gonna see if my cutters will do it or not. Like I said, stainless steel is pretty brutal. You have to keep it super cool, super slow because once it overheats and work hardens, but bam, it's kind of too late. So I've got a couple reference lines marked out. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. I know that's gonna drive a lot of machine. It's crazy, but that's kind of how I roll. See what happens. All right, so basically the name of the game is gonna be as slow, uh, really slow on my speed, keeping it cool. I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping, but Stainless steel is not that fun to work with sometimes. I'll just try it out and see what happens. Check it out. It worked. I'm stoked. And it's not even hot. Look at this. It's not even hot. Oh, snappity doo da day. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that is one, one part of the process that had me, uh, had me doubting, actually. Interesting here. I'm not sure if you'll see this. It curves over right here. It kind of ducks down right there. We can fix that though. Oh man, oh man. Now I'm gonna go inside and clean that up with a file. Sweet, sweet. Good job, good job little mill. I knew you could do it. Super, super impressed with how that came out. I, I didn't think that was gonna happen like that. I thought I was gonna have to drill a couple holes, take a small little die grinder with a cutoff wheel and kind of slot those and then file them. So that saved a huge amount of time. Pretty happy with that. Now, the next step of the process, I've got my kiln heating up. Uh, for heat treat, I'm gonna do a 1400 degree soak for 15 minutes and then go up to 1920 degrees Fahrenheit. Leave it there for 20 minutes and then do a plate quench between two big chunks of aluminum plate. These guys right here. And also I'll be wrapping this knife in stainless steel foil. Now this is a special type of foil. And the basic idea behind it is that you wanna put in here, we kinda of make a little pouch. We kinda of fold this thing up, we fold the edges over, hammer it nice and tight. The idea being to make an airtight pouch. And then we'll put the knife in there, seal it all up. Um, I'm gonna put a piece of paper in there as well. The idea behind that is that as that paper heats up, it's going to burn all the oxygen off inside of the envelope, and that way we'll be heating this in an inert environment, which is inside this foil. Uh, that way we won't decarburize the steel. Uh, really important when you're getting up to super high temperatures. You know, if you're heat treating tool steel and stuff like that, it's not, uh, you know, you're going up to 1450, and you're not leaving it there for too long, but for the amount of time this thing stays at uh, 1920, uh, that's, that's quite a while, and we definitely wanna make sure we maintain the integrity of the steel. So we're gonna go ahead and make that pouch right now. I've got the kiln warming up. Actually, we're at 1400 right now, so we better go ahead and get this on. That's gonna be good. I like it, I like it a lot. Leave yourself lots of room. I take some of those little bars out because that little packet is gonna puff up. And we're just gonna let it do its thing. All right, so the kiln is at 1,913 degrees. 
It's just gotta come up to 1920. Uh, as soon as it's done there, we're gonna leave it for 20 minutes and let it soak at that temperature. Once it's done soaking, I'm gonna rip it out of the uh, out of the kiln. I'm gonna cut the foil. Now, there's there's different ways you can do it. Some people, some people quench in the foil. I prefer to take it out of the foil as long as you can do it really quickly. Uh, sometimes I've been trying to cut the foil open, it doesn't work, and I'll just quench with the foil. But my preference is always to take it out of that little stainless pouch that we made. And then as soon as we do that, we're gonna stick it onto this piece of aluminum here, put the other one on top, clamp it down nice and tight, and then blow compressed air all around it. I've got my, uh, got my air ready to go. That way we can make this a really quick process. Hopefully the hardening goes well. All right, so we've got that done. That part of the process is done. We're gonna take that knife out of the out of the plates there, and then we'll do a flash temper. I've already got the oven preheated to 325, and so that part of the process is always like, ah, you know, it's just like, ah, I don't know why I get really intense about it. It didn't go as smoothly as I'd liked it to, but it went fairly well, and it should be good and hard. And I like the plates, because usually when I'm plate quenching, I don't get too much for warpage. Uh, time will tell though, and we'll go ahead. Oh. The oven just turned off, so I'm gonna throw it in there for a flash temper and then let it cool down. And again, we've got two more temper cycles at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they usually don't turn out this well. This one is perfectly, perfectly flat. Uh, that's some really, really hard steel. That is hard. Like it's not even touching the surface there. Good. So. Temper, here we come. Yes, I'm so excited. This one is working out really, really well. All right, so the blade is cooled to the touch now, and again, that was out of the flash temper cycle, which was 325 degrees for one hour. The next step in this process, we need to move to the temper cycles, and we're gonna do two temper cycles at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. They're gonna be two hours long each. It's actually five o'clock in the evening right now, so I'm gonna spend the rest of the night tempering this up, and then tomorrow morning will be part two of this video where we are going to grind in the bevels. Uh, I put a picture of this up on Instagram and had really good feedback. One gentleman had mentioned that I round these corners out a little bit, and I, I agree, like holding this in the hand, I kind of feel it's a little bit of a hot spot when you really grab onto it. So we're probably gonna grind this down a little bit, and then I'm thinking for this one, we're probably gonna do a hollow grind. The reason for that is that, uh, well, hollow grinds stay nice and sharp. They're really good for slicing. But also, we're going for the most weight reduction on this blade as possible. And if you've got a hollow grind, it's gonna remove more material than a flat grind. I know it's quite marginal, it's not a huge significance, but it is more, and I would like to make this as light as possible. I'm thinking we'll probably do some type of a paracord wrap on here, uh, just to make it a little bit more comfortable when we hold it. And then, I'm not sure, we might even get a Kydex sheath made for it tomorrow. It would be kind of nice. My thinking is that if you had a sheath that carried right here in the small of your back, it's out of your way when you're running, when you're hiking. Uh, obviously on a backpack it might be different, but you know, if you're just going for a day hike or something like that, but then you can just grab it and just pop it right out and you've got a knife available to you. Uh, a usable size blade, but still not too heavy uh, that it's gonna like weigh you down or get in the way. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, there's gonna be a little circle showing up in the corner right here. Click that button to subscribe to the channel. And tomorrow, we're gonna grind in the knife. In the future, I'm gonna have part two of that video. So the second part of this video where we grind it in, that will be in this link right here. And then it'll just be some other playlist or something or other right here. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>